Hi sewing friends, it's Erin Van Handel from Zmocked Sewing Blog and I'm here to report out on how my leggings muslin came together. So let's get right into it. Hey guys, I'm doing a little bit of pattern drafting this evening. Um, sort of pattern drafting, pattern hacking drafting, mod drafting. I am working on a waistband for my leggings that have the triangle crotch gusset. I'm using a tutorial from sewhere.com, which is where um, I got the leggings class from. That's how I made the leggings. I took a class from sewhere.com. So I'm using their tutorial. And in their tutorial for making the waistband, it calls for using power net or power mesh. And I wasn't sure if I had this in my stash, but I felt like I did. Um, I just had this needling thing like, I think I've got some of that in my stash. I've never sewn with it before. I had intentions at one point to sew with it. Um, so anyway, I did. I had about half a yard and it is this beige knit. And it is, it, it feels like something like high-end lingerie is made of. Like it's really, it's really smooth. It's very, like the um, knit on it is just, it's really tight and even. Um, and I know that there is, there's like power knot and then there's like compression knot or something. There's, there's like another species of kind of support compression sort of fabric that apparently runs like crazy. This does not. Like I can pull on it and pull on it and it does not run at all. Um, and I need to do a little research to figure out where I got this. I actually think I may have bought this from sewhere.com because I was poking around on their website and it looks like I have this product because the salvage has this like kind of stripey thing on the edge. But um, I'm curious, do you have a source for power net? I think this would be super comfortable for a bra. Um, so that's kind of exciting. So here's what I drafted. It doesn't look like much. It really isn't much. It's a rectangle, but I'm following the tutorial, making sure I understand everything as I go. Where can I put this so it focuses and you can read everything? So um, you make a band that is like four inches tall and the width is half your waist at the narrowest part. And what I have to do is cut to in fabric and cut to in the power mesh, which I did right there. And then it's got a half inch seam allowance and I will be working on constructing that band in the next couple of days. Tonight, I am working on legging some more and I want to show you what I have done because the last time I worked, I had a work sesh in between the time that you saw. So I worked, you saw it, and then I worked, you didn't see it, and now I'm working again. So let's see what I'm working on. As you can see, I'm working on the waistband of my leggings. And the thing I worked on during the time you didn't see is uh, putting in this bit of elastic. Now I'm using directions from sewhere.com, which they are responsible for the made to measure leggings. And what they have you do is you sew, you have this power mesh, um, and then you've got the outside, okay? This is the interior, exterior, obviously. So you sew the power mesh to the exterior band, and then you sew a bit of elastic, and they call for quarter inch swimmer elastic. I only could find three eighths at my neighborhood Joanne, so that's what I rolled with. 
um, quarter inch would be easier to handle because what they have you do is sew it to the seam allowance of the um, power mesh and the outer band. And because this is surged, my seam allowance is teeny tiny, like quarter inch less than that, an eighth. Um, so that was a little bit challenging. Like you can see on the inside here, let's see, like you can see very faintly that line of stitching. I was a little concerned that, um, that uh, not all of my stitches caught, but it's not that big of a deal because then you, uh, you flip everything around and you understitch um, the elastic in place. So if you have like most of the elastic on that seam allowance there, you're gonna be fine because then it's understitched in place. What I just did is here, where I'm wiggling my finger, you can see that line of stitching. That is basting. And the reason I basted the raw edges of the power mesh and the outer um, spandex here together is because when you're wearing your leggings, you don't want the inside power mesh to roll to the outside because that's not, that's not cute. That's not a good look. So um, what, I, what I decided to do was baste the power mesh basically in place so that the power mesh and the spandex will function basically as one piece of fabric when I stitch this whole business to my um, to the legs of the leggings, to the bottom part of the leggings. What I'm going to do right now is use my applique scissors and where my power mesh is exceeds the length of my um, spandex here, I'm just going to trim it away. And then when it is time for me to sew the waistband to my leggings in about, I don't know, a minute and a half, um, the power mesh and the spandex will be the same, like the, that edge will be even, and it'll make it really easy to stitch, um, to serge around the waistband and get everything in place. So I'm going to trim this with the applique, and then I'll get back to you. I got these applique scissors last year for Christmas. I think my brother-in-law bought them for me, actually. They're on my Christmas list, so he knew just what to do. Anyway, I really like this tool. These are these are really nice ginger applique scissors. And what's super nice about applique scissors is that when you are trimming the duckbill there, sometimes these are called duckbill scissors, in case you didn't know, they um, they kind of push the other part of whatever you're trimming away, so you can't you can't basically it keeps you from cutting through stuff you don't want to cut through. If you've ever been um, using a pair of scissors and accidentally snip through two layers when you only wanted to snip through one layer, that sucks a lot. Applique scissors keep that from happening. I trim down the power mesh. Now I have the waistband and the leggings here right sides together. And I had quartered both of them and now they're pinned at the quarters so that I can stretch them out evenly. And I also have one of my fancy schmancy z tags that my husband gave, gave me for Christmas last year. Um, and I'm going to put that in the... Actually, let's make sure that is the back. Yes. I know that's the back because the point of my crotch gusset points toward the back. So, I've got my fancy schmancy tag. I'm going to base that in there so... Um, things go nicely for me when I'm uh, surging. That way it'll be easier for me to know which um, 
side is the back and which side is the front because with the made to measure leggings I have now, I have to hold them in front of myself and figure out that the, the side with the shorter crotch, that's my front, not my back. Okay, party people, I'm done with my new leggings and they look so good. Look at how nice this waistband turned out. I know it's a little hard to see because, you know, this is all one color fabric and the variegated fabric, it's rough. But you can see the seam there. But this looks so nice. And it's really comfortable. I especially like, let's see how I can do this. I especially like how the back turned out because it's just nice to have that like transition or like that stop between the back crotch seam and the waist seam. I don't know. I feel like there's something I like, I don't know. I just like the way it looks. I think it has kind of an athletic look, which I don't know. I mean, generally I'm a leggings person for, for sports, for working out, but now now that I have two variations of um, leggings, I just, I just feel like a leggings boss now. So, um, yeah, now I'm going to get started. Just, it's going to be like a, like a leggings sweatshop all up in here. I was wearing these black Nike leggings. These are actually running tights. These are really nice fleece lined, like cold weather, um, running tights. These are really expensive. Um, I was wearing those this weekend and I noticed, Hey, they've got a crotch gusset, just like the crotch gusset I installed almost the same size too. So I thought that was kind of cool. Thought you might think it was interesting as well. Lily and I wanted to tell you that I am going to put my leggings to the test tomorrow morning. That'll be Thursday morning um, when I wear them to the gym and I'm planning, planning on running tomorrow. So we'll see how they feel. Um, uh, on trying them out, I think the waistband is a little on the loose side. Um, but I don't think it's anything that, um, will make them unwearable or keep them from like super sliding down my body, but we shall see. I will report out on the morrow. I'm at the gym post run. You can see my sweaty hair, um, tomato face and my leggings were wonderful. I really like the tall waistband. I did make it too loose and I'd say I easily, I can pinch out about three quarter inch on uh, both sides. How would I say that? Like, like here, I think I can probably pinch out about half to three quarters of an inch. So I need to make that adjustment to the waistband. Um, and I think that the waistband modification is going to be ready to roll for lots more pairs of leggings. As I mentioned at the conclusion of my uh, videos there, my vlogs, um, I ran in my leggings and they were very nice. My only beef was that I made the waistband a little too loose to really put them through their paces. I washed them, of course, because they were really sweaty. And the following day, today, which is Friday, I wore them to my body pump class, my um, group uh, lifting class. So between running and lifting, um, they get my seal of approval. Let's get on the social media train. I have four social media items for you. The first one is from the Socialists blog, 
and it is a an advice column. Um, and the person, the SOAS seeking advice, asked about what what is the correct etiquette for um, participating in an Instagram challenge and you win, like you're you're called out by the um, person who is who's running the challenge as being the winner and um, you know there are usually prizes or often there are prizes for um, your participation in such challenges, such photo challenges. I thought it was really interesting and I don't I really don't do any challenges just because I'm kind of doing my own thing. So I didn't realize that um, there were people being ghosted in the sewing community, um, which is, I mean, they're kind of shady characters in every community, but I just feel like the online sewing community is so nice. Like why, how could someone do that? <laughs> kind of in the same vein as sewing challenges is an interesting post about why uh, why you shouldn't participate in any sewing challenges. This post, which is uh, recommended reading from me to you, um, is from Thimble End. And she talks about how um, sewing challenges encourage overconsumption of um, fabric and making clothes that you don't need and how it really uh, how they kind of fly in the face of slow sewing the practice of taking your time when you sew i think it's a really interesting perspective worth um you know diving into for yourself and kind of examining your motivations for why you sew and why your sewing practice is important to you and what you get out of it I want to highlight this really beautiful embroidery that Heather Liu of Closet Case Patterns added to the yoke of their latest pattern release. I think it's called the Sienna jacket. The thing I like about this hack, this modification, is that the yoke has like a floral pattern on it and she used that as a template for her embroidery. So she wasn't starting out from, you know, nothing, from some embroidery pattern, you know, like she's just pulling out of her head or, you know, something that she um, like traced onto some fabric. Like she was using the fabric to guide her stitching and it, it just adds a nice little pop of texture. And the last thing I have to share with you are these coated denim jeans from Allie Jackson. I thought these were so cool. They look leather, but they're not. Um, and she, well, she has the fit really great. She's made this pattern. I think they're gingers a couple of times now. So um, she's very familiar. And when you are this familiar with a pattern, it's a good time for you to start experimenting. And a great way to start experimenting is by using different fabric. In her post, she talks about what it's like working with this coated denim. And one of the challenges she faced was that it's, it's a fabric where if you, um, every time your needle punctures the fabric, it leaves a hole that you can't like you know, rub out, like the the weave doesn't really come back together. So she had to be very mindful about where her stitching lines ended up. And that's all I have for you for this final edition of Work in Progress for 2019. I will see you next year. Take care.